What is up everyone and welcome back to another video. So as you probably know by now, duo cash cups are quickly approaching and they might even be going on when you're watching this. And that's why in today's video, I figured it would be good to discuss how to place higher in duo cash cups and cover all the topics ranging from the point structure of these tournaments, how to handle your roles and strategy, how to improve with your duo, and some other general tips to help you place higher and improve in these cash cups. Before we hop into it though, be sure to drop a like if the video helps you out and consider subscribing if you're new and want to see more tips and tricks content just like this in the future. And lastly, before we get into it guys i want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video which is code tech in the item shop seriously guys it's 100 percent free for you and it really does help me out a ton so i would really appreciate if you could consider tossing code tech into your shop but with that said though and without further ado let's get into today's video so starting off this video we're going to begin by discussing the tournament format and the most optimal strategy to play based on that specifically we're going to be talking about the point system before we even get into it though i do want to mention that these tournaments are limited to champions league only so if you're not there yet then make sure you go ahead and do that Obviously, you got to make sure that both your duo and yourself are both in champs before you hop into tournament prep. But moving on to the actual point system, in these duo cups, placement points are pretty much completely skewed to the later parts of the game. The first point comes at top 25, and then it goes like this. You get one point each for top 25, 23, 21, 19, 17, 16, 15, all the way down to top four. From there, you get two points for reaching top three, another two points for top two, and three for the win. On top of this, you also get one point per elimination as well, just like most duo tournaments. So overall, all guys a win grants you 25 points from placement alone plus your kills as you can tell it's super skewed towards the end of the game but if you do make it into top 25 and beyond every single game you should be able to rack up some really solid points very consistently throughout the tournament instead of relying on pop-off games now based on the point system and what i've seen in past tournaments like this it does seem like playing a fairly consistent play style is going to be the move i recommend landing at a moderately populated spot and just playing every single game out like a regular tournament match now for the most part i usually do recommend w king the first game out but placement points are also really good in this tournament so i recommend that you keep it fairly light the placement points are really solid in these cash cups and they definitely outweigh the eliminations by quite a bit so getting consistent placement points in every single game is definitely going to be the move in order to maximize your points since the first game is usually a relatively easy lobby you could consider w king a bit harder to try and start off strong but i personally recommend playing a consistent mostly placement based play style getting kills only when you can get them safely or you need to fight for any reason such as needing a refresh of course this doesn't mean you have to hardcore camp and i definitely do recommend recommend you guys get some kills, but it does mean that you should try and be intelligent about when and how you choose to take fights. And keep in mind guys, you can always frag out an end game so you don't have to play super aggressive throughout the entire game. Moving on from that though, for the next section of this video, we're going to be discussing how to actually improve as a duo when it comes to cash cups, and that's going to start with how to handle roles. If you don't know what roles means, it basically refers to your quote unquote job in the duo, basically the way that you're typically going to play. In duos, roles are super simple, usually consisting of the IGL or in-game leader, and the fragger. Starting with the IGL, the in-game leader is basically the one who calls the shots. They handle most of the rotations, when and how to take height, and usually choose which players to fight and disengage from. The IGL is typically the quote-unquote smart one, if you want to call it that, and makes most of the tough decisions. On the other hand, the fragger is usually going to be a very mechanically inclined player, and they basically focus on getting kills in mid and end game. So in an end game, while the IGL leads ahead and tries to tarp the team into zone, the fragger can look back and try to get extra kills and refreshes to keep everything moving slowly. So each duo is typically going to consist of, as I said one smart player who calls all the shots as well as the mechanical player who can get kills these roles typically go into effect after early game once you've handled your off spawn fights since obviously two on two fights really don't require roles they basically just require coordination and both players have good mechanics another key with these roles though is that each player should really understand how to play their opposite role as well the last situation you want to have is the igl dying and then the fragger having no idea how to tart properly in end game or even survive without the igl to guide them and the igl should also be a competent fragger as well the fragger should be somewhat what smart just like the IGL and be able to fight well. In many competitive games, it's fine to be a one-trick pony, but with the nature of team modes in Fortnite and the fact that you can literally just get removed from the game if you die, you need to be able to fend for yourself if your teammate dies, so try not to only practice your role, but also be ready to play the other role if needed. If you and your teammate can figure out a healthy role structure, you're going to be one step closer to being consistent and winning more games as a team. So with that said, once you've sorted out your role system with your duo, the next step to improve as a duo is going to be a fairly common sense one, and that's scrims and arena. As you probably know, know by now if you've watched my videos for any amount of time, scrims and arena are pretty much the bread and butter when it comes to improving at Fortnite, and these are the two methods that most players use to improve their gameplay. Starting with arena, obviously playing arena duos not only allows you to qualify for duo cash cups since they require you to be in champs, as well as that though, it's really just a good fast-paced way to master your drop spot as well as get a ton of engagements in with fairly skilled players. If you're in champs, then the average skill level will be close to the average skill level you're going to run into in these cash cups, making arena a great way to practice fighting and getting eliminations as 
as a duo. On the other hand though, scrims are definitely more geared towards mid and end game. Although I do recommend trying to get into the more private and closed off scrim servers since they don't have zone rules. To start off, most players are probably going to have to do zone rule scrims. The reason to do these scrims is really simple. Since they basically require you not to fight for a good chunk of the game, the end games are usually pretty stacked and allow you to practice the end games that are similar to like high elo games in cash cups and FNCS. Now obviously in a public server like East Open, Vital Scrims, or G2 Scrims, which is some of the most popular scrim servers, you won't exactly be facing the top level players since they're open to everyone, but they are a very good start. And once you do gain some solid placements and prove your potential in competitive, you're much more likely to actually get into a more private server that doesn't have zone rules or bad players. But as I said, public servers are a good place to start. And the last thing I want to bring up in this section is going to be ladders. Ladders are a pretty common practice method for tournaments nowadays as they're hosted by many scrim servers, and they basically allow you to practice in a tournament style format. They have a point system similar to cash cups and they don't have any zone rules either which makes them almost the exact same as tournaments minus the money on the line and even some of them do actually offer cash prizes. And alongside that, some servers like East Open also allow you to participate in ladders to rank up. For example, they have a challenger's rank and then a gold rank and if you win a gold ladder you can even get into the practice cord, which is basically a private discord reserved for pro players that host scrims as well. So ladders are also a pretty solid way to make a name for yourself in competitive. And although I do play NA East and I'm only familiar with their servers, I do know that every single region in Fortnite has scrim servers. If you head to the Open Scrims website, which is openscrims.com, you'll be able to check out the practice tab for every single Fortnite region and join any of the public scrim servers, so hopefully that helps you guys out. Overall though, I do recommend you look into some scrims with your duo and even ladders if you're able to get into them and get some really good practice in that way. Getting into the last section of this video though, and this is going to be probably the most important factor when it comes to improving as a duo, and that's going to be VOD reviewing. VOD reviewing basically consists of reviewing your gameplay with your teammate, and it's easily the best way to find your mistakes and fix them. Whenever you do scrims, ladders, or tournaments, I recommend you and your duo hop into replay mode together and take a good look at your gameplay and really just analyze for things that you can work on and fix in your gameplay to improve as a team. VOD reviewing is absolutely critical when it comes to improving at Fortnite, so I absolutely recommend that you guys give it a shot whenever you have some solid gameplay to check out with your teammate. This is easily one of the best ways to spot your errors after important games and make sure you're getting consistently better at the game. So if you're not VOD reviewing with your duo already, I absolutely recommend that you guys get started. But with all that said, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to place higher in duo cash cups in Fortnite Chapter 3. Hopefully this video gave you guys plenty of useful tips regarding your playstyle and strategy in these tournaments, as well as how to actually get better as a duo and prepare properly for these tournaments. Overall, take the time to practice with your duo, review your scrim and tournament games to figure out what you can work on, and repeat that process over and over and over. Of course, there are nuances to all of it, and I did give a little bit more detail in the video, and it will take plenty of time and dedication, but if you can apply yourself and really focus on improving, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to improve and get some good placements. If this video did help you out, then be sure to drop a like on it and consider subscribing as well if you want to see more content just like this in the future. And as always, thank you so much to everyone who uses code TECO in the item shop. And if you'd like to help your boy out a bit extra, then I would really appreciate it if you can consider using it. It's 100% free for you and it really does help me out a ton. But with that said, guys, thank you all for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.